On this super review, let's take a look at the Rose Mini 2. As you guys probably know, I don't have much of a life, so I spend a lot of time just kind of browsing random things on the internet, and I like browsing specifically in-ear monitors that I've never seen before. And I came across this one that looked pretty interesting. So this is the Rose Mini 2. And if you haven't heard of this thing, as you're about to see, this thing has got a pretty unique form factor, just very simple, minimalistic, and that appeals to me. Um, also worth knowing this thing has got two balanced armature drivers, no dynamics, so it's pretty simple earphone. That said, it's not especially cheap. It clocks in at, at around $110, so I'm interested to see how this thing will compare to some other earphones in that price range, specifically the Fio FA1. I don't know, I don't really know much else about it, so let's go ahead and open up the box and find out. All right, so I've been living with the Rose Mini 2 for the past week, spending a lot of time, frankly, with this earphone because I, I quite like it. Um, but worth calling out just right off the bat is that this is the Mark II version of the Rose Mini 2. I knew this before going in, but I don't think I mentioned it during the unboxing that there was a Mark I and then the Mark II. And this is the Mark II that comes in this uh, very simple, basic plastic yellow shell that I don't know if you could say that it's particularly attractive, but I think it's kind of cool looking. And, and I also think that I failed to really emphasize just how stinking small these buds are. These things are teeny, teeny tiny, like the size of my pinky nail, teeny tiny, seriously. And that has a couple of really nice benefits to it. One, I think that these things are very, very comfortable. And I guess that makes sense, right? There's, when you put these things in your ear, the only thing that's really touching the inside of your ear is gonna be the ear tips. The, the housing of the IEM itself doesn't really touch your ear at all. And that's pretty unique. And, and I think it, it makes it comfortable, but it also it gives it, it gives it some use cases that are, are not applicable to other earphones. So like for one, this is a really good earphone for sleeping in. Like I can sleep on my side and there's no, like there's nothing, if I'm lying on my ear, there's no pressure at all on the inside of my ear through my IEM because these things are so teeny tiny. And I haven't tried it, but I suspect that this would also be a pretty good in-ear monitor for wearing like a motorcycle helmet over the top of. Um, I don't really do that. I don't really listen to music while I'm motorcycling, but if I were to be that sort of person, I, I feel like this would be a pretty good earphone for doing that. 
because it fits so well, like because it's so small, you can actually fit it in pretty deep. It doesn't fit in quite as deep as something like an Etymotic, but it does fit in deeper than most of my in-ears. But it kind of depends on which, which tips you've got. And I've got these little double flange tips on here that I like quite a bit, and they let me fit it in deep. And surprisingly for something this small and just insubstantial, the sound isolation is actually really quite good. I would say above average for sure. Not quite as good as the sound isolation you'll get on something like an Etymotic, but frankly, it's not far off. The cable that comes on the Rose Mini 2 is surprisingly nice. Like, it's very simple. I don't know if you can tell here. Well, you definitely can't tell here on camera. I'll give you a close up. Um, but it is surprisingly simple. There's not really much to it. It's just a basic cable, but it's somehow a little bit nicer than most cables like this, right? The, the outer covering is not rubbery. It's very soft, but it's not rubbery um, or plastic. It's just, I don't know, it almost has the character of like a cloth to it, which I don't know. I think it's, it's pretty nice. Now, one thing that's worth calling out is that, well, they are MMCX connectors, which I like, but there's no ear hooks on here. And that's kind of interesting. Um, it means that you can wear these things either over ear or hanging down. And personally, I like to wear them over ear. Um, in fact, I don't know if I even really experimented with wearing them hanging down, uh, because generally when I'm wearing earbuds like this, I like the over ear style. It will prevent microphonics. It will make it so that they're more secure in your ears that tugging on the, uh, the cable, if you catch it on something like that, it's not going to pull it out of your ear because it's going to tug on the back of your ear. And I, I don't know. It's worth calling out that there's no hooks there. And for me, it wasn't a problem. Um, there is a chin cinch, which I think is actually fairly useful when you're wearing a, a headphone like this over ear and you don't have ear hooks. One other thing that's worth calling out about the build of this earphone, this is one downside, is that there's actually a manufacturing defect in the first one that I got. The, the left ear with certain sub bass frequencies, basically anything below, I would say like 60 Hertz. There was a fairly audible, like rattling or rumbling in my left ear. Now the good news is that Pinon, they were able to send me out a new one. Um, but that is, I don't know, something to keep in mind is that like any earphone, like anything you buy, frankly, you should spend some time making sure that you got a good copy, uh, and worth calling out that that might be something you'll have to look out for here with the Rose Mini 2. And now we can talk about the sound signature of the Rose Mini 2 and as much as I like the build of this earphone and the fit and well, the fact that it's unique, I actually like the sound even more. This sound signature is just about exactly what I'm looking for, which is a fairly neutral sound signature. I don't think it's boring though. I think that it is, it's neutral with a little bit of interest kind of baked into it. So the bass is relatively flat, but it is slightly north of neutral. And it's got a decent sub bass rumble, not a ton. Look, this is, a, don't, do not get this earphone looking for a bassy earphone, but the bass impact here is nice and strong. It's BA fast, but it's not, it's not particularly big. For me, it's just about perfect. The, the mid range is really kind of where this earphone is all about. And it's just got a nice clean mid range. I would say it's slightly on the cool side versus the warm side, but just kind of slightly, you know, the upper mid range doesn't have a massive lift, but vocals do have a nice presence. Um, I would put these tonally uh, in a very similar position to something like the Shozy Cross Neo CP. Um, maybe these are a little bit, a little bit brighter than the Shozy Cross Neo, but it, it's a very, it's very minor. I think general tonality is pretty similar. Um, we talk about the treble on these things. I think is also really, really well done, which, you know, some people that are treble sensitive might actually find this to be kind of a bright earphone, but I don't think that the treble in here is ever, ever harsh at all. In fact, like sibilance is surprisingly well controlled on this earphone for something that's, you know, it's not shy about its treble at all, but it does seem that the treble emphasis that they do have is not so much in the lower treble where you might have some of that harshness and sibilance. It's more kind of a, just an extension of the treble where, you know, past 10 K again, I'm kind of just making up numbers, but you know, the treble doesn't roll off the way that it does in a lot of other earphones and it gives it a nice sense of air and space and a little bit of a bite that I like. I'd say the soundstage on the mini two is 
not like especially wide, but it is it is better than average, I think, especially in this price range at around $110. You know, the only thing that I can think of that's kind of similar is the file FA1 and the soundstage on this, I think, is doing much better. The the instrument separation and, and the definition between all the different sounds is really, really pretty strong here on the Rose Mini 2. And then directly compared to the file FA1, I was kind of surprised that the FA1 actually just comes across as a much brighter sounding earphone than uh, the Mini 2. Um, the FA1, it's just got more upper mid range, more treble emphasis. It can come across as a little bit gritty, I think compared to something like this. This is just, I think a lot smoother execution and generally a more mature execution on that sound signature. And the FA1, it's a relatively neutral sound, but I don't know, maybe I should stop saying relatively neutral. It's just, it's not a sharp V, but it does have more treble bite to it than these, if that's what you're looking for. Personally, I actually much prefer the sound here. And the FA1 was an earphone that I really liked in the around $100 price range. And it's one that I still recommend quite a bit, but I think that at least for my personal tastes, the Rose Mini 2 is probably gonna be one that I start recommending more often in this price range. So out of five stars, I'm gonna to have to give the Rose Mini 2 Mark II a very solid two stars. I'm just kidding. If this thing's getting five stars out of five, I, I'm really, really pretty happy with this earphone. You know, it's got a unique build that not just looks kind of cool, but it also fits really well. And it's got some use cases. Again, this is a very, very nice sleeping earphone if that's something that you need. Maybe a good motorcycle earphone if that's something that you need, or maybe there's some other use case that you can think of where having really dinky, dinky, tiny earbuds could be pretty useful. I'm actually kind of curious. If you have any ideas, leave them in the comments down below. But the good thing is that they also sound excellent. Like this is just about my ideal sound signature. I think that, you know, directly compared to the Shozi and Neo CP, I prefer the sound of the CP. It's just a little bit more fun, a little, a little bit more dynamic and a little bit stronger in image separation and imaging and soundstage and stuff like that. But for $110, these things are much cheaper. And again, they're, they're, they're this small. They're really cool. I think the Rose Mini 2 is a really nice option for anyone who's into a relatively neutral sound with just enough bass emphasis to give it some body and some oomph just enough treble extension to, to keep it exciting and give you just kind of that sense of detail and, and sound stage that treble tends to give. Um, and it's just got a really nice natural tonality. Uh, frankly, I don't think there's really anything that I would change about this earphone. If you're interested in checking out the Rose Mini 2 Mark II, of course, I've got links in the description down below. And while you're down there, you can hit the like button for the video. If you liked it, you can subscribe to the channel. And then I'll see you on the next super review.